I have two words to give to you for this year. One is responsiveness and the other is gratitude. We want to have great responsiveness. Wives to husbands, husbands to wives, children to parents, parents and children to guru, parents and children to the temple, parents and children to the scripture. The three strong pillars of sadism. You have it all. You have the Guru, you have the beautiful Vedas and scriptures and dancing with Shiva, and you have the temple, which is the birthplace of the culture, living with Shiva. And of course the Guru is merging with Shiva. So what did you do in your past lives to come so far on the Hindu path? In India we have strong families that are attached to one of the great monasteries there, Dharmapur Monastery, or one of the Shankarchari monasteries. They have their gurus, they have their scriptures, they have their temples, and they have their culture. You brought all this up in the West. It's a wonderful thing indeed that has occurred. This year we will continue living with Shiva and perfecting the sutras, which will come easier as time goes on. Each time you incorporate a sutra into your life, the next one moves up as a big challenge. And then you incorporate that in your life, and the next one lives up, looms up as a big challenge. This is what the temple does. It brings you into the culture. Wouldn't it be ridiculous to dress the deities in t-shirts and baseball caps? <laughs> you want to look like the deity yourself, because the deity resides within you. The self, same self that resides in any of the gods is residing within you this very moment. The temple will be continue to lift up the culture within you. The scriptures will continue to challenge you. Something you haven't realized. You read the Vedas and Dancing with Shiva. Oh, I haven't realized that. They'll challenge you and perplex you. The things that you thought you knew but didn't know. The same verse that maybe you've read a hundred times all of a sudden becomes a challenge to you. That's the magic of the Vedas and the Anubhas that are one of the scriptures. And that'll drive you into meditation. To be able to look through your third eye at the core and essence of where that knowledge came from. And of course I promise to continue to do my job, to push you, to challenge you, to help you through the difficult times, and to make the good times difficult, because the good times don't do us any good, really. <laughs> Anytime Seon Swami says your astrology is not good for a while, that's the time when you can spiritually unfold. That's the time when you have to use your willpower more. That's the time when you have to use your intelligence. That's the time when you have to use your pachangam to work with the laws of the universe. And any time he says your astrology is good for a year or two, that's the time when your ego can come up and develop very nicely. That's the time when you become self-centered and selfish. That's the time when you cannot make progress on the inside, but you may gain a lot of external things on the outside new way of looking at astrology. So it's the Guru's job to push all of these things along, push the scriptures, push the uh, culture, see that the temple works properly. That's his job. It's the temple's job to 
lift up the culture, make you feel great, because you can always take refuge in the temple. Whatever the guru is telling you, you can take refuge in the temple. Whatever scripture perplexes you, you can go to a puja and then meditate afterwards and look at it. Gain the same insights that the rishis had when they spoke out from the unknowable knowledge, the great scriptures of Jiva himself. It's all within you. So you'll be dancing with Shiva this year, living with Shiva this year the very best that you can. And if you don't go any further than you have right now, living with Shiva, I think we've done a very, very good job. A very, very good job. And you'll continue to do better. And you'll continue to merge with Shiva until your final Muksha, when you don't have to have be drawn back into earth consciousness. All the billion Hindus in the world are looking forward to Muksha when a time when nothing pulls them back into earth consciousness. Why? Because they see through how the consciousness of this earth is created, how desire is created, how the things manifest, they see that and they want to go on and not be in a physical body. And what gives you that divine sight? The temple, the scripture, the guru pushing you on the outside, pulling you on the inside, pushing you on the outside, pulling you on the inside, and keeping you ever reminded that the scripture in the temple and you are the most wonderful thing on the planet today. It's everything that's in the scriptures and everything that's in the temple, and everything that's in the guru is in you. Right there. Now we shall continue working very diligently this year to merge the families together to bring the a family the joint family unit and the extended family unit into a tight loving wonderful situation in throughout all the families of the world <coughs> and we finally sifted it down to knowing if blame is to be cast, if something is going wrong in the family and blame is to be cast, we now know who to look at. Those guys over there. <laughs> All the heads of the family. Their job is to have the family dancing with Shiva, to have the family living with Shiva, to have the family merging with Shiva, so that no one steps on anyone else, no one bumps anyone else their job, by their example. Of which everyone will slowly, slowly follow. And we have seen the lack of this family unit. Uh, the families breaking up throughout the world. And we have seen the results on the lives of the husbands and wives and all the young adults and children. So I'm asking all of our family worldwide to set examples in each country of a family that can dance with Shiva, live with Shiva, and merge with Shiva, and produce good citizens that can produce a better life for the next generation. So that's one of the things, among others, that we shall be working for. In our outreach work, we'll be doing two things. Continuing to manifest Hinduism today as a public service, and with all of our intelligence and might and willpower push, dancing with Shiva, into every Hindu home, library, and school that we possibly can. 
It has already been well acclaimed by scholars as well as uh, individuals who have benefited personally from reading Dancing with Shiva. And we have are getting ready now for our second printing, which is it's only been out for just a few months, and we're ready to print it a second time. We're very pleased, so we want to keep pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. Just two things, Hinduism Today and Dancing with Siva is our public service. All the rest is service to your family and uh, enjoying the temple and enjoying your own personal meditations and realizations of which that's why you're on earth to realize all these wonderful things. No other reason. Because as soon as you realize enough of them, you automatically won't be on earth anymore. You live a good life, body will wear out, and you'll be on your way <coughs> with all of your friends that are also on their way to the same destination on the inside in your beautiful glowing body of light your Purusha body. So we're all waiting together and enjoying each other and enjoying our inner life. And when you get to a certain point, the outer life fades because you've done everything and you've seen everything and the inner life becomes the greater reality through all the day. 24 hours a day, the inner life is a greater reality than the outer life. You get into that stage when you get older. <laughs> Somebody sent me an MCI and said, I find it difficult to get up two hours before sunrise. Well, I said, that sutra you'll be able to do when you get a little older you'll automatically get up before sunrise. They said our young monks here find it difficult to only eat what they can have in their own, just two hands also. <laughs> and they think it should be a tray that they hold. <laughs> Each one interprets the sutras a little differently according to his needs. <laughs> they are but guidelines. They are but guidelines. They are the same guidelines that if uh, you were living, in, even in India today with traditional families, these are the guidelines that the families run on. That's all they are.